everybody. Uh, as I think about this time we have together, uh, the, the word in the back of our church, read it to me in the back. What does it say in the back? What's the word? I did a little quick research about legacy. And I don't know how much longer I have to live. I, I, I recognize today as never before that time is precious. Somebody says you're old. I said, well, thank God. Yeah. There's an alternative. <laughs> they try to flatter me and say, well, no, you're, you're a young man. No, I'm not young. I'm old. Say it. Old. Oh, oh, oh. Say it Come on. Oh. Oh. And it took a lot of living yes. to get this old. Yes, it did. Sure. The second thing I want to say is as I, as I look back on the island uh, legacy, the one thing that the I can, I, legacy is clear is that we're not atheists. In fact, the spiritual said it this way. Up above my head, I hear music in the air. Up above my head, I hear music in the air. Up above my head, I hear music in the air. There must be a God somewhere. And I, and I think about that spiritual. There was all the things that didn't and couldn't happen. There was that realization. They maybe didn't understand who God was or where he was, but they knew that we were no accident. I learned that out of the 7.5 billion people on the planet, not one of us are identical chromosomally. When, when the, the Bible says when, when, when God made man, uh, he made the elephant, the zebra, I saw this beautiful Afghans coming out of hotels one. If you ever seen an Afghan, it's kind of bigger than a greyhound, but it's got some long hair. It's running down the street, just, just blowing for it. And can you just imagine what God did when he made him a, an Afghan and watched that dog run? Can you imagine what God felt like when he, uh, if you ever seen a cheetah run? 70 miles an hour. I watched him in, in, in uh, Namibia run. Can you imagine how he felt? Matthew, when he saw the cheetah cutting it at 70 miles an hour. You know what he said? He said, this is good. But then, when he got to making all of those things, he made man. And the Hebrew says that he didn't just call us good. He modified good. He said, this is very good. Say with me, God don't make no jump. Or say it like you mean it. God don't make no jump. The other thing I want to say is a threat to the legacy is, is bound up in one quick, you know, I'm a preacher, you know that. Give it to us, brother. Matthew uh, uh, 15 says, Peter came to Jesus, one of the disciples. Let me just kind of reach over. He said, he said, he said, say, you know, man, I got a problem. This can't keep messing with me. I'm, I'm translating him. He said, man, what should I do with you can't keep messing with me? Should I forgive it? She said. Jesus said to him, he said, what? How many hundred give it? He said, 49 times. Jesus said, no, 490 times. You got to be kidding. You got to be kidding. I told mine. Then he said, I'm going to tell you a little story. Then he said, listen, whenever you see in the scripture a parable, he wants it to make so clear that you can taste it. He wants to bring a truth, a fact, into, put skin and bone on it. 
So he says to the, the, to the fellow, he said, well, listen. He said, there was a rich man. He had a lot of money. And this cat owed him a million dollars. Hear me? Talk with me. And he said, do you repeat it for a minute? He said, and he came to me and asked me, he said, well, will you forgive me of this big debt? And he said, I will not forgive you the debt. I'll cancel it all out. Your credit is clear with me. Yeah. You're all right. And then the man went out. Give me my money, boy. You owe me two dollars. Put your behind in jail. And so, man, because in those days, if you owe somebody, you were to jail. You could pay it. And when the ruler Peter, when he heard about it, he said, come here to me, man. Bring him here to me. He said, I forgave you all that money, man. I forgave you all of it. Right? Talk with me, man. And that cat over there owes you two dollars, man. And Turkey, you didn't even split your eye. You had the cat thrown in jail for two dollars. The Bible said, he said, I want you to put him. Give him to the torturer. Hear me. Say, torturer. Torturer. How many of you had a bad Tuesday? How many had some people messing with you? You know what I mean? Bobby, come on, talk with me. Yes. You ever yes. mess with you? Yes. Get yes. on your last nerve. Yes. All right now, please, Bill. All right. <laughs> and he said, give him to the torture. I used to think that that meant hell. After all, the cat deserved to be put in hell for treating that cat with two. He owed him two dollars. You hear me? Owed him for two dollars. He owed him a million dollars. Come on now. You know what torture means? It means if you had something irritates you and you can't scratch it, it won't help it. You know what I mean? You try to scratch it, try to be cute with it. It's, it's tearing you up, baby. That's what torture is. The point of the story is that unforgiveness is torturous. And in our family, we have had some dysfunction. I'm so grateful. Since I'm so grateful for that time we spent in Charlotte. You hear me? <coughs> Mandela, he had been in, he had been in He'd been in jail for seven, 27 years, Ella. And so uh, at an inauguration, his jailer came out to him and, and, and went in Mandela. And, and at the dinner time, he put his, his, his uh, jailer between him and his wife. You know what, what we say? You must be crazy, man. What's the matter with you? Putting this white cat that had you in to save all this time besides you and your wife. Hey then! Mandela said, if this man is looking said beside me, I still be in jail. Hatred is like you eating poison and expecting the person you hate to die. Yeah. It divides families. Mm. Mm. 
Forgiveness. You know what the antidote for hatred is? Love. Say, come on, say it like you. Love. In fact, the fifth dimension said, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. That's the only thing that there's too little love. Come on, say it with me. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. That's the only thing. Somebody in the eye. Look at somebody in the eye. In the eye. That's the only thing. That's the only thing. You're not looking at nobody. Are you? You're not looking at nobody. I'm looking at a little girl in the eye here. Look at the eye. Come on now. That's the only thing. Let me say this to you. You see, when you don't, I don't use the word sorry much. It don't mean it's sorry. The word sorry. Sorry. Say it. Sorry. 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 It says sorry. 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 It just means how you felt. Sorry. It just smashed up my toe and break on my soul and said, I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> but forgiveness has this phrase in it. Jada. Will you forgive me for treating you the way I treated you? Let me say this to you today. But my one desire out of all of the life you know, is that this antidote, love, impregnates you. And when it impregnates you, you know what you got to do? You gotta go through the labor pains. My wife and we, uh, we had our first child. She was pregnant. I said, I've got to so, console. I said, Well, you know, baby, I know what it's like because I was in the hospital five years. I went through all kinds of things. She said, But you ain't never had no child. She <laughs> said, You haven't had a child yet, Al. <laughs> Let me say to you.
She said, I'm, I'm sure it's family. I'm talking real. I'm getting laid. Uh, you're stuck. Talking. Get real talk. Real talk. <laughs> and she said, you going to marry my girl? You going to marry my girl? Yes, she is. I said, mother, you told me that I was no receptive person. You said, find somebody who would love me and put up with me. Take the good with the bad. Well, you're telling the truth. I said, what, 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 what you say to me, what you, I read the Bible, is that what, is, is it not true? As I tell you, when I married anybody, you were married. You had polka dots and spots. But let me say this. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have a good friends. I said, we, look, I said, I'll marry whoever you want me to marry. I said, but listen, I want to have an annual living uh, uh, allowance. I want to have a car. And, a, and a, an apartment. You don't have to give me a house. Give me an apartment. And I want each year, I want to have a cost of living increase for me and the, the girl you want me to marry. She has some of that mind. And so, she went away. I, 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 I love reading it because she was. Authentic. Right. Gotta be real. She went away. And after praying about it, Ella, she came back to me with tears in her eyes. She said, We forgive me. My racist attitude. Whomever you feel is the person for you, I want to support you and be married. Married. So, yeah. But she was on the job. Really. I invited Mark and have Mark and me read it. Read it, took it into my bedroom and showed her how to mess that. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you won't marry this guy? <laughs> you told all about me. You hear me? <laughs> but that was 53 years ago. And we've been married 52 years. Wow. And I told her, well, let me just tell you one other quick thing about the bitterness. So when, when we went to her, for Margaret's mother and father. I went for that part. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He said, no way in the world you, will you. I, I had my best, I was alone. I was looking as good as I could look. My nap was all right. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 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 <laughs> no ass on no lips. <laughs> 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 Hands folded on the table, politely. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. And so when his father, his mother and father came, my mother, we was there, and, and my pastor, and I asked him for him, what his, his daughter had his grandpa. And he said, no way. Diane, no way. And then uh, he left her house and went home. Mother, tell her. This is your story.
I was going down to church and preach about this. <laughs> and God said to me, you can't go down there and preach about the church of that business. You got this you know, how to get to a part of the law. I said, well, I don't cuss. Look, I have I don't cuss. <laughs> 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 what do you mean? That's a good term. <laughs> what I have to forgive him? He don't deserve my forgiveness. Look how he's done his, his daughter, his old first child, his first grandchildren were my children, Elizabeth and Noah. How dare! You don't come back and kill me, man. God said to me, maybe that story I told you about me. No, I was the guy on Jesus. Call him up and ask him to forgive me. I said, for what? He said, for the goodness of hell that makes your heart these tingles against the kid I had on the phone Sunday afternoon. I didn't tell Margaret. Because Margaret had just written him. I mean, he just he read us all. I mean, we, and literally, uh, he treated Margaret at the, as she was dead. Just totally. So I'm feeling all of this. I'm feeling I'm I'm right. He don't deserve my forgiveness. The Lord said, "You don't deserve mine either." But I'm forgiven. Call it. Sounds like I called it. I said, "This is the Norman for you." Not sorry. See, I told you that's sorry. Word is sorry. I said, Mr. Norman, will you forgive me for the bitterness I held against my heart against you all these years? For the old man and your daughter. I was And he did specifically have some forgiveness. And for disowning your grandchildren and 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 and, and accepting me for the, the content of my heart because of the color of my skin. Will you forgive me for my bitterness? Sharing with what I have, have learned, and I am learning. So that way, I haven't, I haven't got the degree yet. I'm still in the class. <laughs> because if some things come up, God, we'll have to ask for more help around. But when I find, when I do it, I am free of torment. 